Hey everybody, Sam here. Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm inside our greenhouse. Yes, we have a greenhouse for those who don't know, or yes, we still have the greenhouse for those who do know and haven't seen any content in a while. In today's video, I'm gonna clean this thing out. It is full of junk, it is disorganized. I'm gonna put some organization to that junk, put some method to the madness, and otherwise get this thing ready to start gardening. We've reached that time of year where it is time to really start gardening. And while we've been working the past couple of weeks on our outside of the greenhouse garden, our mulch base to solidify and add stratification to our soil, and then our raised beds, putting them together, I'm now in the greenhouse. And as you guys can see, it's a mess. When we were working on building our homestead over the last year, we moved the greenhouse over from North Carolina. We disassembled it, brought it over, reassembled it, put it up, and then it got left as is. The last video, the last thing you guys saw, we put the screen up in here around, put some things in, and honestly, that was it. This never got touched or used last year. In fact, it became mostly a storage area for any kind of garden equipment or things that are okay to get a little bit of rain on them, and it pretty much set like that. This year being the year of outdoor projects and currently in the process of building our garden means that it's time to get in here in this greenhouse and clean this up. First thing first, I need to clean the floor up, sort everything, and give myself room to work. I'm going to go ahead and dig through all the stuff that's in the greenhouse, make probably little piles and sort things of what's garden related, what's keep, what doesn't need to be in here, probably take it over to our storage building, and then whatever is trash or junk, toss it. So first thing first, cleanup duty. So about 15 minutes and all the work is done as far as cleaning up, you know, pretty well. There's still stuff in here, but whatever's in here needs to stay in here for now. There was only like two things that didn't belong. One were some toys and a pair of stilts from the boys as they were playing around the area. I guess this was the place they got put. And the other was our propane powered water heater. We used that when we lived in the camper and we used our washing machine off grid. 
but yeah, I mean, you know, totally off grid. It was all solar powered, and that whole whole adventure was off grid. But that's what we used to power our washing machine as we did laundry for the six months living in our camper. So what I want to do next is put this potting bench up. It's about 10 feet wide, maybe about two feet deep, and I want to go ahead and attach it to the studs here in the greenhouse and remount it because that's our place to start all of our seeds and really have a place to work inside the greenhouse. So looking around, there's basically three walls that I can mount this bench on. Left, right, or back. After kind of weighing the pros and cons of each and seeing what would be beneficial and what would just kind of be in the way, I think I'm going to put it pretty much right where it was when we had this whole setup in North Carolina. Right here on the left wall, right up next to our sliding door. My reason for that is one reason this door when we have strong winds they always come like this direction like straight towards you and this door has been blown off of its track a couple of times i think if i put the bench up close enough it will act as a physical backstop to keep it from swinging and popping off its track and just be a good use of the space while hopefully keeping our door on track you know forever Real quick this door is barn style so there's a track up here at the top and it literally just slides left and right to close off the greenhouse when needed Obviously this time of year, or well, okay, as we have it now, it doesn't really do any benefit because it is open to the air, but it's at least that's how the door works. And someday when our greenhouse gets done and usable, probably towards fall and winter of this year, this will be useful. But for now, it'll be a good place to store it. And hopefully, like I said, keep the door in place and that's not have problems with wind. So this potting bench was originally our DIY pallet countertop at our outdoor kitchen patio structure we had back in North Carolina. We had it there for a while. We took it down, we repurposed it into our greenhouse, but whenever we built it over there, and then it all came apart and over here. Looking at it now, it's a little bit aged, but I think it's still gonna be fine for its uses. It has been laying down on its face, so the surface or the top area, the pallet boards that you see, are pretty wet. They have some mud. They have a ton of worms and wood lice and all sorts of other bugs on them. I blowed off most of them with the leaf blowers that I could, but I know as we get it up and mounted, they're gonna get out of the way because it's gonna be exposed to the sun indirectly through our greenhouse fabric, but still get toasty warm and they don't like that. As far as mounting the potting bench, I'm going to attach it directly to the wall studs of the greenhouse with some three inch long screws and then use some scrap two by fours or other boards to give myself some simple legs to go from the outside edge straight down to the ground. Pretty basic. Okie dokies, monkey. <laughs> now what are you going to do? <coughs> uh, got the other one. Ha <laughs> ha. 
<laughs> that goes downhill quite a bit. This whole potting bench has majorly warped this way. I've tried to push it back and work it, but it's actually kind of bending the greenhouse walls and I really don't want that. This is also locked down with screws so that I'm not going to try and fight it. I'm not going to take it apart and correct it. I'm just going to kind of work with it as it is. I've got the off cut from my leg. I'm going to put it down between the bench and the wall studs and that'll allow me to attach this to the wall this to the stud plate or the board and make it rock solid without having to fight each other or pull anybody really weirdly where they don't want to go. I decided I'm going to use my 2x3 off cut. It's a little less expensive of a piece of wood for this section. It'll still be fine. I think for an old piece of junk table that was carried over and honestly is like six years old at this point, this looks pretty good. This is totally functional, perfectly fine for what we're going to use it for, which will be holding our seed trays, holding our small little seedlings, and just being a general use bench out here in our greenhouse. Very nice. As you can also see, it does do its double duty here, holding the door in place. It should help keep the wind from blowing the door off of its tracks, and that is great. So we double dip this chip. <laughs> it's about as straight as a chip too, isn't it? Oh well. I did add the blocks as you guys saw, trying to work around some things and added a lot of things that you don't normally see in construction. But from the final above here working stance view, it looks pretty good. You wouldn't know there's all sorts of finagling and hoodoo magic down there <laughs> underneath the top, but that's okay. It's the way it goes when you work with old stuff, stuff that's been reclaimed two, three, three times over. So it started as a pallet, became a countertop and outdoor kitchen, went to a greenhouse potting bench in North Carolina, got disassembled, brought over, stored for a year, and then set back up again. Yeah, quadruple repurposing. Can't say much about that one, I mean, other than just what I said. I don't know, fizzle.
This place is really starting to take shape. So I got the metal shelf put up, as you guys saw here at the end of the potting bench. I put all of our extra pots, all of our fertilizers, uh, kind of equipment things for gardening that I could find at least. They're all there now. I got our seed tray out here sitting on the bench. And then down below the big blue tub, that is our potting mix kind of recycler. As things die or we have extra, we put it in here. That way it's readily available to scoop, fill up little pots, start seedlings, transplant, do any kind of stuff. It's pretty handy to have a barrel down here. Okay, half a barrel down here. And then over here, I put back our Earthquake Pioneer rear tine tiller and our Haas Tools wheel hoe. And then the little tiny garden way cedar kind of more of the gardening infrastructure power equipment per se is over here to the right and behind my head you can see me kind of brainstorming on something that I would really like to build in the near future I want to build some lawn rake yard tool holder rack something back here I figure it's a great perfect place to put all of our shovels our rakes our spades any kind of yard or garden tools why not put it out here the wall space is not going to be used otherwise the primary sun is right here on this whole south facing wall that is our east wall and it's not going to affect any kind of growth so yeah that's what it'll be in the future at least the last thing i'm going to do is get my grabber stick and pull down a bunch of these riding spider egg sacks that were laid in here last year there are four just inside the greenhouse and another four or five outside that are from the very large riding spiders the black yellow and white spiders they were all in here last year because we didn't do anything with the garden so this was like their playground we'll go ahead and get those little egg sacks down relocate them so they can hatch somewhere other than the greenhouse don't want them very close so we'll move them somewhere else As I round out this video, I do want to take a second to talk to you guys about the greenhouse plastic. This is now on its third year and it still looks great. What you're seeing is pretty dirty and we still have the flaps on the sides. We weren't sure if we wanted to trim them flush or leave them, so we've left them for now, but it's holding up great. This is the exact same plastic that we put the greenhouse on in 2020 and here it is 2023 still working great still doing wonderful has not had any rips or tears no yellowing no delamination and no problems so i hands down recommend this stuff it is not super cheap but honestly three years of plastic especially in direct sun is doing really good so yeah i hands down recommend it i'll put a link to it down below it's not affiliate there's no kickback for me just saying that this stuff's done great uh, some of you probably are wondering or you may wonder and so there you go Three years old, still looking wonderful, highly recommend it. I will also take a second to let you know, because you have seen it and you're probably wondering, here on the back side, you see some large raised bed type looking things. Those are some large raised bed type looking things. <laughs> Those were our attempt last year to make our own metal raised bed gardens. We did three of them 
and that's as far as we got. We got sidetracked with the house build, finishing it out, you know, moving back into our home from living in a camper, and we did not get to do anything with these. We went back to revisit them late last year, realized that they were not as strong as we had hoped, they were not as cost effective as we had hoped either, and so we just abandoned them. That's why there are three random ones stacked back here. I don't know that we'll ever use them as garden beds. What I probably am going to do is disassemble them, use the metal roofing, which is what the sides are made out of, and enclose the bottom of the greenhouse. From where the bottom plate of the greenhouse and the ground is open now, I want to enclose it with the metal roofing, and I think that'll be a great thing to use there. And then over here to the side where the wheel hoe and tiller is, you're seeing a bunch of junk. It looks like junk. That is all of our galvanized posts, T-posts, trellising poles, anything along those lines, that's where I put them. It is outside, but it's in between our blue half barrel containers and the greenhouse wall, and it's a pretty good place to store it. At least that's where it is for now. We'll definitely use those as we garden and as we finish building our raised bed gardens here. We'll definitely use them a lot more, but for now, that's kind of why they're stored there and what that, you know, junky stuff is. It's all garden stuff. And then to touch on the raised beds, because you guys have seen them here and there, our birdies raised beds, the big green ones, there has been no progress on those with this video as where you saw it from the last. We put them together. They are all put together now, but they're still not in their final location, not leveled, not fully assembled, and all that stuff. So don't worry. You haven't missed that content. We are waiting for our galvanized hardware cloth to come in. We had to order four foot wide, 100 foot long roll of it, which was youch but hey got to keep the voles moles gophers and i don't know the stuff out of our raised beds so we're waiting for that to come in and when that gets here then we'll get back to work on the beds so you've not missed the content i just want to tell you that and let you know that hey while we're waiting on stuff to come in this is other things that i get into especially this is what i got into today while angela spent all day making soap in her soap shed she made another six loaves of soap which will equate to about 120 bars of soap whenever it's all said and done and whenever she does that, I mean, it takes like good four hours solid. So I've been out here playing in the greenhouse today. I took the boys to lunch a little while ago and just have had a nice, enjoyable day out here. It's been a wonderful early spring day to get some work done and to really kind of get me rock and rolling, excited and planning ahead for our garden season. There is one last thing I want to do to round out the greenhouse, and that is to put up our metal sign. It's what used to be on the front of the greenhouse in North Carolina. It never got put on it whenever we brought it over here and reassembled everything. So let me go grab it out of our storage shed, put it up, and then give you guys the final last look of the greenhouse. And we can say, yeah, I think it's ready for business now. I guess that's about it for today because that's about it for today got the greenhouse cleaned out organized everything put where it needs to be a lot of stuff thrown away that needed to be thrown away but otherwise got everything pretty organized it is nice to have our potting bench back in place it looks like a slip and slide is so out of level and crooked but that's okay this is now four times reused if i've been recycled four times and i still look that good i won't complain so we're not going to complain about that guy either otherwise it looks great angela came in here a little bit ago and she said it looks fantastic she thought it was awesome she loved the fact that it's all open and that we can pretty much go ahead and start our seeds which we need to do right now it is the end of march and where we are here, I think we're in zone 7A, I believe that's what we are, it is garden season. So what we will have to start seed-wise, we will start in here. But otherwise, we need to really get rocking and rolling on our raised beds, finish those out so we can direct sow a lot of our stuff. If you guys got any questions or comments, leave them for us down below. Otherwise, appreciate you hanging out with me, doing some stuff in the greenhouse. Hopefully you enjoyed it, and we'll see you guys next time on The Homestead.